Nine days ago, independent Chilean journalist Gonzalo Lira disappeared just ahead of his scheduled appearance on George Galloway's internet show. Five days ago, word went around the internet that there was confirmation that he had been killed by members of the Azov right-wing battalion. The following day, I put out a video saying I doubted that and he was still alive. Fortunately for us all, the following day, Gonzalo Lira reappeared. And now, tonight, he was on George Galloway's show. He couldn't reveal details of what has happened to him during his time away for legal reasons. We'll come back to that. But he began with details of his new and only account, valid account, where you can find him and some dire warnings of what's ahead as a result of what's transpiring in Ukraine. Gonzalo Lira on George Galloway tonight. The only thing I have at this time is Twitter. Twitter, it's Gonzalo Lira 1968, all one word. Gonzalo Lira 1968. And that's my official Twitter uh, handle. And uh, that's where I'm going to be from now on. Do keep in mind that I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm back just two days ago. And so that's all I've been able to organize at this time. But uh, through that uh, uh, focus, that, uh, that point of, of entry, I will organize a new YouTube channel and start producing YouTube content and uh, get back up on my feet uh, because I, I want people to know what's going on. And also what's happened is that because of the situation, I've gotten a great deal of attention, which is incredibly flattering. But I think it would be worthwhile for me to use this attention to put the spotlight on a lot of different people who have a lot to contribute to the conversation, to people understanding the situation, not just in this issue of Ukraine, but also in the issue of the mismanagement of our civilization by our current leaders. We in the West, in Europe, Europe is going to go hungry by the end of this year. You know, George, that uh, I used to write financial blogs because I've been in finance. I, I grew up around finance. My my family is has been in fin finance since forever. And so um, I know what has happened. The European Union, in trying to punish Russia, has shot itself not in the foot. They've shot themselves in the gut. And Europe is slowly bleeding out. And come September, there will be food shortages. I mean, forget about energy shortages. There are going to be rolling blackouts uh, by September. And this coming winter, the winter of 2022-2023, is going to be horrible in Europe, in what is supposed to be the richest continent on the face of the planet. And it's all because of the incredible mismanagement and the incredible vindictiveness of the European leadership towards Russia. And of course, if you kick somebody and you kick them and kick them and kick them, finally, they're going to kick back. The Russians have kicked back and they have only even started when they decide finally by September to end the gas supply to Europe, which they will, because the long term contracts with uh, um, Gazprom are ending. They're starting to end. I do believe in August and throughout the, end, the rest of the end of the year, the long-term contracts are, start, are going to start to end, and the Russians will not sell any more gas to the Europeans. The Europeans keep threatening to sanction Russia and saying that, oh, we're not going to buy your gas anymore. The thing is, see, they don't seem to realize that, see, the, the gas is the, the, the uh, raw material that Europe needs because the Russians have other customers for their gas. They have the pipelines yeah. running to China and Southeast Asia. They don't need Europe. Europe needs Russia. And they're going to find out how much they need them when they go cold and hungry by the end of the year. And this is going to drag down the United States, too. The American listeners who are listening to this, I'm here to tell you, this is not a European problem. This is a, a global West problem. This is Europe, the UK, Canada, America, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Even parts of Central and South America are going to be hit by this. And it is going to be a disaster. And we are going to see 
migrations from Africa and the Middle East that are going to dwarf anything that happened in 2014 and 15. We are going to see migrations from Africa and the Middle East that are going to dwarf anything that happened in 2014 and 15. We are going to see tens of millions of people migrating from Africa, from the Middle East, because of food scarcity. You have to keep in mind something. Uh, Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan control 40% of the global wheat export market. 40%. And do keep in mind, in 2011, during the Arab Spring, which started off because of high food prices, why were there high food prices? Well, because Russia had a slightly bad harvest because of uh, inclement weather. It was slightly bad, and it caused the chaos of the Arab Spring. Imagine Ukraine, the breadbasket of Europe, one of the richest soils on the planet, one of the major uh, um, per, uh, providers of wheat in the global markets. It has postponed the, the, the planting. Roughly half the fields in Ukraine at this time have not been planted. So you're going to have at least half of the regular grain supply from Ukraine going to the rest of the world. How do you think that's going to affect the Middle East, sub saharan Africa? It is going to be a disaster. And so I'm telling people now, get ready. And if you're smart, and I, I hate to sound like, um, you know, a chicken little, the sky is falling. But this time, it really is falling. Uh, buy food now it is, while you can. It is. Buy, yes. Buy food now. I'm taking that advice. Gonzalo Lira, stay safe and stay in touch. Staying both safe and in touch is going to be the balancing act that Gonzalo Lira has to achieve. Here's the deal, you see. Gonzalo was arrested as part of an investigation by officials in Ukraine. And that's the reason he has to be a bit circumspect about what he says. Because in order to ensure he remains quiet about what happened during his incarceration, he had to sign a document before his release that he wouldn't discuss anything that occurred between the moment he was arrested and the moment he was released. He can't say a word about that. He just clarified that in the conversation he had with George as well. I, I cannot and I signed documentation to that, that avowed that I understood my obligation. And until this um, criminal process is complete, I cannot discuss it uh, in, in any detail. Of course, just... Uh and so that sweetheart deal allows the Ukrainian Security Services SPU to release Gonzalo and at the same time ensure that no embarrassing details of anything that happened to him at all managed to come out in the media as a result of this uh, ongoing investigation. However, it doesn't seem to have circumscribed his ability to report on the events on the ground there. Uh, so Gonzalo Lira is still there bringing us good information. Um, what he had to say about the extent of the harvest was very telling. International reports say that about two thirds of Ukraine's uh, grains are, are going in as seed at the moment, but he says it's closer to half. If so, that's catastrophic news because the way this works is that with a shortage issue, the price, say there's a shortage of 10%, the price will rise maybe 20%, not 10 or 25. If there's a shortage of 20%, the price may rise 40%. A shortage of 40%, the price may double. So it's a multiplier effect here, and uh, the extent of the shortage is absolutely critical. He says that's going to be problematic for us. Uh, by the way, there are those who say that uh, this story of a gag order effectively on Gonzalo Lira by Ukrainian authorities uh, means that we have no way of verifying whether he was actually arrested by them in the first place. But hold on just one moment because uh, on the Duran, uh, on the day of his release with Alexander Christoforou, um, he discussed Gonzalo Lira and Alexander, the fact that Alexander has seen footage, you know, video footage of his arrest. And in fact, he does have, have legal representation and I do believe that that, uh, that gag order on his incarceration uh, is real and that 
he was substantively arrested. What Gonzalo Lira has been saying is true. Um, but what he's been saying about the, the grain issue is stark and bad news. But it's not anything as bad as the news coming out of France where a low turnout has not, as I'd hoped, uh, been an opportunity for those committed to getting rid of the current establishment to seize their opportunity of a low turnout and effect some change, but in fact was due to apathy on the part of the forces of change and uh, a swing which was exploited by uh, Macron to achieve a significant victory. This is terrible news, not just for France, but also for the entirety of Europe appalling news because it means that uh, with uh, weak government in Germany and a neocon controlled government in France the entirety of Europe for the next five years is a playground for the remainder of the globalist elite they are going to lose power in November in the United States and be routed there so it means that now Europe is their only and their sole remaining power base. That's not something to look forward to. We are going to have to defend ourselves. We are going to have to come up with strategies to survive that because I don't see any way we're going to be able to stop the agenda of these people. And the agenda of these people extends to civil liberties issues that you're not going to like. And it extends to effectively a replacement for the military industrial complex by the pharmaceutical media government complex which wants to turn you into raw material for a pharmaceutical health system that intends to corporatize the entire health structure and suck even more of the remaining GDP of the ordinary person into this profit extraction system called health. Europe has been led like a lamb to the slaughter in all of this. And the people of Europe are going to be the raw material for the extraction of this profit. It is an extraordinary, appalling development and something that uh, I dread to see. And for those who fall victim to it, they are going to pay a terrible price. Uh, for those of us and for those of you who are clued in and who are aware that is your greatest benefit. That is your greatest treasure. That you're among those whose eyes have been opened. That's all that matters at this point. Is whether the propaganda machinery has worked on you. We are witnessing in that defeat. We're witnessing the immaturity of the uh, European electorate. By comparison with the great sceptical political maturity of the American anti-establishment forces who see through and have a level of uh, understanding, which although it isn't the fullest, and the fullest depth of conspiracy knowledge that maybe all of us who follow things closely have, but they know enough to know their interests and when their interests are being challenged. And as a result of that, they created MAGA, they created Trump, they don't even need Trump now, and they're resurgent and they're in charge of their own destiny as a people and as a nation. And the people of Europe are lambs to the slaughter by comparison. This is the chickens coming home to roost, unfortunately, for that immaturity in the, in the, uh, the lack of political noose political know-how in Europe. Just don't get it. Propagandized. And so you who are aware of what's really going on through the information you get from Gonzalo Lira and all the other sources that you value so much, that is your greatest defense because you've just watched how that immaturity of the uh, anti-establishment forces in Europe has been used to divide them into two camps which couldn't cooperate with each other, even though it was in their collective interest to unite and oust Macron and see what would happen. Who cares? It would at least displace the existing establishment, but no. No, instead the left is bought off with promises about global warming uh, issues being sped up to accelerate their own enslavement. They willingly vote for Macron. That's the level of maturity and lack of political noose 
which the European activist movements in general have. So they're irrelevant at that political level, irrelevant. The only thing that matters is, are you among those who saw through COVID? Which means you're probably also among those who are seeing through all of this current narrative of the war with Russia and its presentation in a very limited way. When you now understand the larger macroeconomic scope of this, the great global schism which is emerging, the sort of stuff I refer to in the audio I did earlier on today. So the fact that France has gone, the fact that Europe's now effectively in the control of these people and that this propaganda apparatus, which you have seen ramped up first for COVID and then amplified even more for this confrontation with Russia, shows you the degree of, of mass F O R. M A U N O T Y X exactly, which we won't say the words, but it involves this entrancement which you're seeing. Now, what kind of a process is that that's going on? That entrancement. It's 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 the natural outcome of a stuckness of culture that eventually paints itself into this kind of a corner. This is the kind of thinking which often results in wars real wars with big consequences. Modern societies, we can't fight that out. But what that is, is that is square thinking. These people have just cannot think outside the box. And that box becomes more and more and more constraining the more it goes on and it drives out those who can think outside the box. So that great schism is getting even deeper. Let them, those of us, the 30% of the population who have their skepticism intact must continue to speak out and articulate like we're doing like i'm doing speak out and challenge the narrative that's how you defeat it by refusing to be silent by spreading the word so ignore that political level what matters is whether you're on to the issue of the psychological warfare campaigns that are being waged through COVID. And now, as a result of the exploitation of this conflict, by the demonization of Russia, by the hype and amplification of it all, you are seeing the classic tactics which would be reminiscent of those rolled out by the Nazi propaganda machinery during World War II. This is no different, because this is them. However, despite all that, I'm still confident. And even economically, after we see the defeat of these people, the boom is going to be spectacular. All right, I'll leave it like that slash rant for tonight uh, on a night where Gonzalo Lira was back in action again on the airwaves. Very refreshing. Great to see. Unfortunate that we had that outcome. Uh, let's just see how it goes. And I'll be back with more. Hope you can join me for that. But for now, for BreakFreeNews.com, this has been Fenton Dunn reporting. See you soon. Joseph Dunn's going to take us out uh, to, to lift the mood a little on a sobering night. Uh, Joseph Dunn's going to take us out. His new album at josephdunn.com. And uh, he's going to take us out with Take Me There. All right. Be back soon. Bye for now. And you can take me there. Some see beauty, some see sleep. She danced for passion, a love of all she sees. She catches my light, my light in her eyes. She catches fire.
The dance is all she needs. 